Yo, what's good? It's your boy Carl. Honestly, I really don't have anything better to do at this moment. It's five something, and my dad is cooking, and I didn't want to take a shower yet because it's really humid, hot today, and I've been just sweating a lot. Yeah, just all over my body. I did go to the gym, but I didn't actually work out. I just paid myself a visit, and yeah, just met up with my friend, and I got there like around three. Because before that, I went to the hospital with my grandpa. He needs to like check with the doctor again after he, you know. Checked out from the hospital, you know what I'm saying? All right, so I just feel like reading some book.、Um, I'm not sure which book yet, but let's take a look. You see, so I have, you know, taken the books that I read the most and left it at my grandparents' place. And here I just got a few books that I either read it long time ago or just I barely read it.、Uh, Kevin Hart's autobiography, I read that one. The autobiography of Gucci Man, I read that one. The Spirit of Zen, I read that one. Influencer, Influence, I read it a couple of times. Make time. I just read it like probably three times. Subliminal, I read it for like probably five times. Outliers, I barely opened that book. And principle, I read it entirely. David Goggins can't hurt me. I think I've almost finished. Atomic Habits, I read it entirely. Barack Obama, I read it for like five to ten times, but. It's pretty difficult to understand. Actually, I don't know why. Yeah, delivering happiness. I finished it, and the last one, the word as I see it, I read it probably just once, and yeah, it was difficult to understand. And that one, Elon Musk, I read it for a couple of times. Understanding the business. That's actually my textbook. In college, and you probably can see that. Oh, *Sapiens*, the comic book. I read it entirely, and that one is actually *American History*. I read it entirely when I was in、uh, high school. *Biopsychology*, I read it almost entirely. That was my textbook as well, and that one without any text on it. I mean, some words, scribbled words. That's actually American history as well. I read it long time ago, many times. And Ting Nan Huai Jing Jiang Chai. That's a Chinese book. I read it many times. Stacy. I think I read it for like once or two, twice. And that the last one is Zhou Xingqi, Stephen Chou. I don't remember if I read it or not. And this is a dictionary, Oxford Dictionary. Another one. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So, okay, which one should I read? <laughs> I'm not doing a live, so I probably won't get any feedback until a few months later. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna just pick a random book.、Um, let me just like do this. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. This is the book. Ah、oh, shit! I didn't like this one. Make time. How do you focus on what matters every day? Okay, I'll just read it. Yeah. Uh, okay. How about? Let me just open a, another random page. Okay. Okay. I didn't feel like reading this book. But ah, it's all good. I mean, just、uh, read on.
page 157. Uh, I think this chapter is about stay in the zone, okay? And there's about six small sections in this chapter, okay? 157 page. Getting into laser mode is only half the battle. You have to stay in the zone and maintain the tension on your highlight. Focus is hard work, and it's inevitable. And it's inevitable that you'll be tempted by distraction. Here are our favorite techniques for letting go of that temptation and focusing on what really matters. Make a random question list. It's natural to feel twitchy for your phone or browser. You'll wonder if you have any new email. You'll feel a burning desire to know who was that actor in that movie. Instead of reacting to every twitch, write your questions on a piece of paper. How much do wool socks cost on Amazon? Any Facebook updates? Then you can stay in laser mode, secure in the knowledge that those. Pressing topics have been captured for future research. Oh, I love this. I see. Yeah, definitely write that down. It's not that urgent, but you do want to just like leave it aside so you can focus and get back to work. If you don't write it down, you just constantly feel like you're gonna forget, and you have that burning desire to find out about your question, right? So just write that down on a piece of paper or just. On your notebook, I mean, yeah, that's a really good technique. Yeah, I learned something already. Yeah, so now I see why did I got this book like just randomly. Yeah, I loved it. Notice one breath. Pay attention to the physical sensations of a th- single breath. Breathe in through your nose. Notice the air filling up your chest. Breathe out through your mouth. Notice your body softening. You can repeat this if you like, but one breath really can be enough to reset your attention. Paying attention to your body shuts up the noise in your brain, and even a pause that lasts only one breath. Can bring your attention back to where you want it, on your highlight. I love it. Yeah. Be bored. When you are deprived of distraction, you may feel bored. But boredom is actually a good thing. Boredom gives your mind a chance to wander, and wandering often leads you to interesting places. In separate studies, researchers at Penn State and the University of Central Lancashire. Found that board test subjects were better at creative problem solving than were their non-board peers. So next time you're feeling under-stimulated for a few minutes, just sit there. You are bored. Lucky you. Wow, this is so relatable. Yeah, I've been just trying this probably like since last year. I've been noticing that, and. I think I watched a TED Talk or something like that about this. We've been just sold this concept of interestingness and whatever similar synonyms to that word. We've been chasing the funniest interestingness. And yeah, constantly looking for that stimulation. Yeah, from our phone, TV, or whatever, and we just kind of uh, what's the word? Like demonize, demonize the word boredom and activity of being bored. Yeah, especially when you are with friends. You just do not ever want to be bored, you know. Before you guys decided to do anything possible, and being bored is probably the last thing you guys want to do together, right? But now I have been alone for a long time. 
although I am at home staying with my family, I just feel like I spent all my time, most of my time alone, either in a cafe or just even at home. When I work on something at home, I am alone mostly. And I just started to get so much more comfortable being alone. And I started to notice I feel bored a lot. But I'm always aware that being bored is nothing wrong. And we don't have to be occupied mentally all the time. We can definitely just allow ourselves to be bored, yeah, and do nothing, yeah. Even earlier, I was at the mall. I challenged myself not to touch my phone before I got up. You know, I found myself a chair in the corner. I was about to read some books, but I was very sleepy. So I put down my book. Instead, I just sat there and enjoyed being bored, you know. And I did not touch my phone. I did not go to my social media apps and get more fun, you know, which is an illusion. It is not fun, yeah. It is just stimulation. Okay, I've talked too much. Let me just continue reading. Be stuck. Being stuck is a tiny bit different from being bored. When you are bored, you don't have anything to do. But when you are stuck, you know exactly what you want to do. Your brain just isn't sure how to proceed. Maybe you don't know what to write next or where to begin on a new project. The easy road out of stuck's village is to do something else. Check your phone. Dash off an email. Turn on the TV. These things are easy. But they cut into the time you've made for your highlight. Instead, just be stuck. Don't give up. Stay at the blank screen, or switch to paper, or walk around. But keep your focus on the project at hand. Even when your conscious mind feels frustrated, some quiet part of your brain is processing and making progress. Eventually, you will get unstuck, and then you'll be glad you didn't give up. Well, I love this as well. It's so awesome, like very just what's the word like、um, applicable, yeah, applicable maybe. Like I can apply this to my own life. I feel stuck from time to time when I need to work on something. But yeah, let's just be stuck and let some parts of our brains work, and take the time to process. And do not give up. Do not get distracted. Keep our mind focus on that one task, and before we get unstuck, and keep working. Until the work is finished. Yes, absolutely right. Take a day off. If you tried these techniques and you still don't have laser mode in you, don't beat yourself up. You might need a rest day. Energy, especially creative energy, can fluctuate, and sometimes you need time to replenish it. Most of us can't take the day off work whenever we want, but you can give yourself permission to take easy. Try taking real breaks throughout the day, and switching to a joyful highlight that will help you recharge. Go all in. We believe in rest, but there is an alternative. Here's a tactic from an honest to goodness modern day monk. You know the antidote to exhaustion is not necessarily rest. The antidote to exhaustion is wholeheartedness. Brother Devi. Stando rest. Okay, let's talk about this wholeheartedness idea. Wholeheartedness is complete commitment, holding nothing back. It's letting go of 
caution and allowing yourself to care about your work, a relationship, a project, anything. Throwing yourself into the moment with enthusiasm and sincerity, we believe wholeheartedness is fundamental to everything this book is about: presence, attention, and making time for what matters. And Brother David's case for wholeheartedness is a new, for us at least, way of approaching laser mode. Of course, both physical rest and mental rest are extremely important. But if you are feeling worn out and unable to focus, Brother David says you don't always need to take a break. Sometimes, if you go all in and embrace the current task with wild abandon, you may find it becomes easier to focus. You may find the energy is already there. This sounds like a radical idea, but we've seen it happen. We've seen teams in the design sprint get the chance to work in a wholehearted way. Finally, focusing on a project they really care about and become filled with energy, and we felt it ourselves. Jack, this is what I experienced that evening when I deleted everything on my phone. Before I had been splitting my attention between playing with my kids and looking at my phone, I was holding back and conserving energy. But when I went all in and threw myself wholeheartedly into assembling the wooden train track and making choo choo noises, the tiredness went away. Jay Z, I feel this every time I go sailing offshore. It can be truly exhausting, remaining alert, moving around a constantly shifting boat, sleeping in two or three hours shifts. But it's an experience that rewards wholeheartedness. No matter how I'm feeling, when I head out to sea. I embrace the challenge wholeheartedly. Any feelings of exhaustion, stress, or unease just fall away. Wholeheartedness is not easy. It's especially difficult when you are reacting to infinity pulls or the busy bandwagon. And if you are used to playing it cool, it may take some practice before you can let your guard down and let yourself be enthusiastic again. But perhaps the biggest obstacle is when your heart isn't really in the current task. For example, when you are working at a job that's not right for you. In fact, that's the context for Brother David's quote. He was advising a friend who was burned out at work to live and focus on his passion. We aren't advising you to quit your job, but we are reminding you that it's important to be proactive and seek out moments when you can be passionate about your efforts. If you choose exciting ways to spend your time, being wholehearted isn't so hard. I totally feel it. Yeah, I feel wholehearted when I record a video. Yeah, I just feel like this might be, uh, just you know, almost like, you know, like serendipitous serendipity for someone else. I just could imagine someone else. You know, from anywhere possible on Earth, clicked into this video randomly for no particular reason. Of course, most of the time when we click into the video, we just got no particular reason. We just wanted to see what this video is about. But if the audience can actually finish watching, then it must be another thing. You know. It must be this video is really for him or her, and they enjoyed it, right? Yeah. So I just want to be wholehearted for this opportunity that I can, you know, communicate with you and share something of my life with you. Yeah. Okay. So now I see. Now I believe the universal. Attraction, like I closed my eyes when I picked a random book. I got this book, and to be honest, this was one of the last books I wanted to read at the moment. But after I actually read for like one minute, I realized this is actually a fantastic book. I read it a few times, but I guess I just somehow got very, you know, cocky in this field. I just felt like I'm. An expert at making time, you know. So I didn't want to like read more in this field. Yeah, earlier when I was in a bookstore, 
I just scanned through all kinds of books and I picked a really random book which is about the world's most beautiful castle and it's entertaining and I just felt like to read something different but now I just see yeah this book is definitely very useful and relatable and I just love the language you know I can definitely read more and learn so much how I can share about all these tactics about you know managing our time and being productive and efficient yeah very fantastic yep I'm definitely reading more of this book by Jake by Jake Knapp and John uh, let's just call it Jake and Jay-Z okay um, yeah fantastic make time all right so it's been a wonderful time thank you for watching till the end and today is June 8th 2023 have an awesome day see you guys later